Okay. Welcome everybody to the Ishtar Channel podcast. We've got a really interesting conversation we're going to explore with you today and the topic mm. is the twin flame. And before we dive into what the twin flame is about and how it's evolved over the years, we also just want to give a little bit of a, an understanding that when we're talking about the twin flame, we're also relating to the many different trends that have emerged through spirituality over the years. And we're going to have a little talk about, you know, why these trends emerge, what they're trying to feed and uh, what need they're trying to meet within us, because we're going to explore that, you know, the twin flame concept, which used to be called, called the soulmate concept, is or has arisen out of the same need that the, the ego is, is seeking. So first of all, we're going to just look at, you know, understanding the different, the different trends out there. And then I'm going to ask Ishtar to take us deeply into um, an understanding for the consciousness of the twin flame so that we and those that are choosing to listen to this podcast can wade through the noise and the misunderstanding for this consciousness and actually help themselves become aware of what it is that they're seeking if they find themselves resonating with the language and with the concept of finding a soulmate, finding your twin flame. Once you really understand what's being offered to you through this seeking, then perhaps it will inspire you to turn inwards on your spiritual journey rather than outwards. And that will unravel itself as we move through this conversation. So Ishtar, let's, let's begin with just, you know, positioning, why do we see um the idea of a soulmate now referred very much in new age spirituality as the twin flame why are we referring that to um a trend and the parallels to so many different trends that have arisen in spirituality over the years um i think that uh it's it's a becoming a real marketing tool a marketer or well, some of the marketing understanding sees some of these trends and how popular they become and then sees that there's a really great opportunity to monetize them and you know a long time ago somebody in marketing said to me you really need to make sure you always explain the promise and that the promise meets a need in people and really that's what's going on here you know the need for finding your one true love it's you know it's in every romantic novel um, you know, young girls are brought up on it, even today with the prince, the prince charming on a, you know, the knight on shining, shining armor, that sort of thing. Um, whether it being man, woman, or whatever, but there's always the partner, the one that's going to love them till the end of time, that's going to and has loved them always, right through time, that is always going to be there as the other half of themselves you know, that they're going to find the other half, that part that is missing within themselves, that they're seeking. Mm. And, and of mm. course, you know, that's, that's, that's really powerful stuff, isn't it? It's really powerful and it comes from our basic needs and desires. And it's, it's great to take that on board and find ways to make money out of it, frankly. You know, it's happened mm. with abundance, you know. I mean, every time you look at something on social media, Someone's doing a workshop on abundance. We're going to tell you how you can get rich. We're going to tell you how you can have lots of money in your life. We're going to tell you how you can have a, you know, the car you want, the house you want, the job you want, all those things. And, and that comes back to that old desire to be wealthy, to be successful in life, which is the programming, of course, of humanity, particularly our Western society, um, where everything is, you know, weighed on how much money you earn. And how many things you own and how much you consume. Mm -hmm. And so abundance is important in that respect. So very easy to monetize. Mm -hmm. And using the uh the cloak or the banner of spirituality as yes. a justified mm -hmm. reason to 
be promoting you know when we can link it to spirituality and try and you know use spirituality as another concept to justify abundance then then we become even more confused about what spirituality is is really about that's right and and this is the journey you know because if we talk about spirituality spirituality excuse me <clears throat> i'm sitting in aircon Spirituality is about going within, meeting the spirit within yourself. It's coming to that connection with that part of you. And this is the growth for you, for your soul, for, for the evolution of your journey. And it is about coming into that place. And, you know, there's so many of us that have a great deal of resistance to that because it's a bit of work. And it's not so easy to monetize something like that, not so easy to market it because it's not in our programming to do that hard work. We really want to find what we're looking for outside of ourselves because we don't see that it really is inside of ourselves. When I ask students to come within and find the divine within you, so many of them find that really challenging and very difficult to do, if not impossible, because they don't actually believe the divine is within them. Mm. they look mm. for it somewhere else so mm. it's much easier to market a position where you come out here do this find this person do this and you will find spiritual evolution spiritual growth and in all our years of doing this work we know we see from experience that that that's not offer spiritual growth mm. So let's just take what you've shared with us now and let's create a little bit more understanding and the misunderstanding for what used to be known. I mean, I remember when I was first introduced to the concept we're speaking of, it used to be the soulmate concept. You know, yeah, that we a long had, time ago, it was called the soulmate. Long time ago, right? And, and you know, mm -hmm. it's speaking to another soul that is there outside of you, another being in physical form that's there um, that matches your resonance and will complete you in some way. Hence, we used to call it soulmate. That's right. Now, now it's called the twin flame. Yes, that's right. In, in the new. And, and just, you know, we came onto this conversation because Ishtar and I came across a very interesting article um, and a very interesting documentary that's even been now made uh, a documentary and it's made it to Netflix. So if you've got any idea of, of the level of marketing that, that we're talking about here, yeah. um, you know, we you can tune in and have a look. It's called the uh, Twin Flame Universe. And it's really about how a couple have monetized the concept of this Twin Flame idea and, you know, monetized it by, you know, preying on people's need um, to feel fulfilled in a relationship, seeking someone else for their happiness and uh, preying on people who are ultimately lost. Because and very vulnerable, happen. very vulnerable. And vulnerable. Yes. So, and from can there, I just, can I just interrupt yeah. them while you're talking about that? Because the more interesting thing of that, and you can jump off and go and watch the documentary or whatever you want to do, but the most interesting thing about all of that, that even though this documentary showed the pitfalls of falling into this marketing trap that was being offered, after apparently after the documentary was shown on Netflix, these this particular group then increased their following by thousands and thousands of people. So it once again talks to that incredible, no matter what you show and what, what is said, this desire, this need that is within you to find your happiness outside of you, that you cannot make yourself happy. Only someone else can make you happy. Only someone else can fulfill you, um, can match you and become one with you. This desire is so great that no matter what you're told, you will still mm -hmm. go for it because perhaps there's a chance that you will find your true love. Yeah, we, we were blown away by how much um, 
as we as we say publicity of any sort what yeah. do they say yeah. bad publicity is still publicity and and in this instance as ishtar said it 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 created more followers and you know what a concern that is so let's speak to what it is ultimately that is drawing more and more people into regardless of what's being shown um and as you say the pitfalls of what's being shown let's speak to you know what what that promise is that well the promise is driving. that you know they're going to be completed they're going to be fulfilled that some other person is going to actually um make them happy and complete them they're not complete without this other person and this is the whole um myth that has been created and it was about the soulmate as well and it's been picked up and now they've replaced soulmate with twin flame and soulmates now just become a friend sort of thing but a long time ago soulmate was the same thing and it was going to be your partner for life and um it comes back to that whole thing of this desire, this belief that the soul has somehow divided into two and the other half of your soul is out there somewhere and you cannot be complete. You will never complete your spiritual evolution until you find that other half of your soul and those two parts come together and merge as one. That is essentially the key. It's almost as if we're setting ourselves up for failure. <laughs> well, yes. So, when you're looking, you this belief, this romanticized belief that the other half of your soul is out there somewhere. And these these particular people were helping them match, find their soulmate or find their twin flame. Um, and so they could merge together. I'm simplifying it, of course. I'm sure there was a lot more involved in it, but this is, we're simplifying it. So what they're saying is that they're, you're not complete on your own. There is another part of you somewhere lost out there that you need to find. And until you find that other part of yourself, then you will never be complete. So it's always saying that you on your own are never enough. And this is the mm -hmm. message. It's always saying that you are lacking something, you are missing something. And this is the message again. And this is the message that keeps getting repeated again and again and again in our society today, particularly in Western society, that you are never enough. You always need to be more. You always need to have more. You always need to be more. Mm -hmm. And what you are right now, that standing here is never enough. And, and, and to me, that is a very sad statement because that is actually what this is saying. Mm -hmm. But really, let's look at this a little bit from a logical point of view and then we will go into the spiritual aspect of it. It's saying that your soul got cut in half. We don't know who cut your soul in half, but somehow your soul got cut in half. So therefore... You've only got half your soul, so you can only perform with half your soul's wisdom and consciousness. And the other half is floating out there somewhere else, maybe in this life, maybe somewhere in another life, maybe it's not even on this planet. Um, and you also, the other part is there's one part of your soul that's female and the other part of your soul that's male. So this other part of you that's out there somewhere is if you're a female, then it's male and vice versa. So it doesn't take in different gender um, assignments. It doesn't take in um, homosexual relationships. It doesn't seem to take any of that in. Um, although uh, I believe that's changed um, in some aspects here, but in that. And the other thing it forgets to take in is that you actually move through as you reincarnate, you will move in and out of a female or a male body many times you don't remain a female or a male you don't remain mm. in the female body physical body or the male physical body you will move in and out to have different experiences of that so you mm. don't you know go and do 500 lifetimes in the female body or in the male body because that would be the assumption that would have to be done because if you are cut in half and you're the female part then that means you're going to do 500 lifetimes in a female body. Mm. So, you know, th there's a few things here that don't make sense to start with from a okay. logical mind point of view, okay? And then coming back to this other belief that only someone else can fulfil you, complete you, make you whole. Mm. And, you know, and this comes back to this whole connection thing, this need to be connected. So 
deep down, we all want to be reconnected with our source. Deep down, we all want to be reconnected and held in that loving embrace where everything is at peace, we're in grace, we're in calm. In the womb of source, where we're birthed from, we all want to be held in that space. Mm -hmm. And so when we come into the physical body and we're ejected from the physical womb, then we're always wanting to go back to the womb. We're wanting to go back to the womb of source. We're wanting to go back to the womb of our soul. We're wanting to go back to the womb of our mother. You know, this sort of continues on. So we're constantly seeking that safe, sacred space in the womb. So we're seeking that in this connection with another being, hoping that they will give us that sacred space. They will give us that safety, that warmth, that peace, that calm. And, of course, what we often find that in relationships, relationships are in our life to teach us something. They're there to challenge us, to trigger us, to, you know, all those things. So when we come into a relationship and it's all wonderful at first and then suddenly we find we're being triggered, we're being asked to look at stuff within ourselves because the other person is touching our buttons, then we no one want to be in that womb. We want to be somewhere else again because that's not working. That's not what we signed on for. Mm-hmm. And so we go out and then we'll go and look for someone else. We go and find another twin flame if we're mm-hmm. not happy with the first twin flame or soulmate. So mm-hmm. a lot of those sort of stories go on. And this is the desire within us to reconnect with source, which we're playing out through others. And we see that outside of ourselves, and we don't understand that to really connect with source, we need to go within. The connection, the gateway to that connection is inside of us. It is not outside of us in someone else. So that someone else is always going to teach us something about ourselves. We'll learn, if we're willing, from that someone else. Whatever we need to learn about ourselves that are going, that's going to support us, and help us to grow, but that someone else can never open that gateway to reconnection to our source energy, which, of course, is the whole purpose. We're looking at a spiritual journey. So when we try and put someone else in place of that source energy, in place of that sacred space, and think that they are going to open that for us, then we're actually never doing our spiritual journey. We're still outside of ourselves, in our mind, in our ego, in our desire, in our need, but ultimately in our lack, Mm. in what is missing and chasing what is missing. Mm. And until we come within and really connect with that source energy of ourself, then we're always going to feel we're missing something. because we haven't connected with that. One of the most challenging lessons for a soul and for the collective, because we see how that lack drives us to looking outside of ourself. We see how that permeates through so many areas of our life, not just trying to find another partner, but it becomes, you know, the root Mm. um, to you know the seeking outside of us you know for so many different things um you know i i often would sit in reflection of of you know what you just said about we come together you know relationships and being in a relationship with another whether it romantic or friendship is always there as an opportunity to to teach us something and i one day I sat and I, I often, I pondered over this, this uh, idea of the honeymoon phase mm. that mm. we go through when we come together. And, and, and I was just sitting there pondering and I was just like, you know, it makes sense because there has to be a strong enough law of resonance to bring in enough likeness for us to have something to ground us or hold us for when the triggers start to come and when the <laughs> yes. law 
yeah it starts to come <laughs> you know and it's like that honeymoon period is like the cementing of a deep enough connection yeah that's going to hopefully hold you there if possible for you know for when the law of reflection kicks in and you realize oh there's you know a few <laughs> other parts of this person that haven't been revealed to me yet that's right yes you know and now I'm realizing there's a few other parts of myself that haven't been revealed yet that this other person is 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 helping me to uh you know to acknowledge so I always look fondly on on that honeymoon period as a way of you know sort of setting the scene for us to then be able to do the deeper work yes <laughs> because you know without that you know strong resonance and like you know we're probably not going to stay there when the going gets a little tougher that's right so I'd love you to speak a little bit more to those that are still with us and are resonating and realizing that there's that the concept the old concept of the twin flame is very flawed if you're really wanting to walk a deep spiritual path that's right yeah and for those that are you know ready to take a deep breath and go okay there's some substance there's some wisdom in what Ishtar is sharing with us one of the courses that I feel speak most appropriately to the twin flame is of course the master's way yes. one of the very first yes. courses that you channeled which was really all about the threefold flame which involves the union of the twin flame and that mm union is is within us it's creating a divine union within us of of the twin flame consciousness i was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to um the two consciousnesses that make up the twin flame and and what it is that we're really being asked if we're if we're wanting to find that union if we're wanting to find that deep connection then what is the journey of meeting those two frequencies or those two essences within us? Hmm. Well, let's just go back 23 years, 24 years ago, when I first started channeling the Ascended Masters. Um, you know, when I first made my connection with them and with my higher consciousness, I was told very clearly that my keepership in this lifetime and what I had what the gift was that I had to bring to the earth was the keepership of the threefold flame. And it took me a long time to realise when I was channelling, you know, for six years channelling and that work became the master's way to realise that that was actually what we're working with was the twin flame. And it wasn't until the masters pointed this out to me and told me this is the training that you've been doing. So I trained with the twin flame for nine years. Still training with it today, but trained with it with the masters for nine years. I have a really deep concept and understanding of the twin flame because the twin flame is part of the threefold flame. It's the holy trinity of consciousness within us. It um it has that resonance of source. So let me go back a little bit to when you're first birthed from source from that womb that we were talking about earlier. You come in your soul is filled with the light of source you are coming into a physical body on earth we're talking about earth at the moment i won't talk about anywhere else anywhere else in this galaxy or in this universe but we're talking about earth you're coming into a human body the earth itself is a polarized field of energy so all consciousness and all energy on the earth becomes polarized it goes into duality it has a magnetic field and so this is why we're so focused with right and wrong, good and bad, black and white, all of those things, because we're living in a polarised field. So the source energy of your being, which moves through your soul, the soul is the gateway to, it's not a person, by the way, it's the gateway to your connection to source and your connection to the being that you become on the earth, the spirit of you. Um, it then comes in and of course that source energy becomes polarized and what happens when it's polarized it comes into a dual energy of the twin flame 
the twin flame consciousness of source, God source. That twin flame consciousness of God source holds light and love. And the twin flame consciousness of source holds the feminine twin flame and the masculine twin flame. But we aren't talking about human gender. We aren't talking about female, masculine or male bodies. We're not talking about bodies or gender. We're talking about mm -hmm. consciousness. Consciousness is energy that has intention. What is the intention of this consciousness? The intention of the masculine consciousness of source is what drives you to do things, to manifest, to co-create, to make things happen, which we have the power to do through choice, through our will. So the masculine drives our will. It drives our ability to be powerful manifestors of our reality, of our desire, of our ego, of our spirit, depending on what we're focusing on and what we're choosing to manifest. The feminine twin flame is the consciousness of connection. It helps us to connect. What are we connecting with? It helps us to open to connect with source. It helps us to open to connect with the higher consciousness of ourself. It also helps us to open to connect with the shadows of ourself because it holds sacred space for that. It holds the love energy, which is acceptance energy, the consciousness of being able to accept what is it is we're meeting. And it is this consciousness that helps us receive guidance. It helps us to receive support. It helps us to receive healing. It helps us to receive connection. All of those things that we need to support the masculine consciousness to actually make choices, preferably choices that serve us and support us to manifest um, powerful energies in our life, like our reality that we live or anything we want to manifest. So it is these two consciousnesses. Now, when, when we are connected as one with source, those two areas are merged as one. They come together and they work very closely together as one and becomes the threefold flame or becomes into oneness with source held by source. When we're in the human body, they become separate. They become two separate consciousness. And so to bring them into oneness is very important. We need to acknowledge them both. But this sits within us, doesn't sit outside of us. So it does require an inner journey to connect with those two energies. Now, what we find on the earth, through my experience, and I'm sure others find the same thing, that humans are very connected to the masculine twin flame mm. whether you're in a female body or in a male body we're very connected to the masculine consciousness of action of decision making of choices of manifesting of creating things yeah very mm. much into that doesn't matter which human body you you're sitting in we're very connected it's and it's also the reason we're very connected to it because it's the consciousness we needed to activate very quickly because it helps us to survive here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very strong survival instinct to activate that twin flame. Then we have the feminine twin flame that often sits sort of further afield in our energy being, not so much on the earth, where we go and we sit more in often in meditation where we're sitting and connecting we're often sitting in the feminine twin flame we're sitting in that consciousness because that has the intention of being at peace of connecting of opening to receive to receive guidance to receive what we need to survive but we're so busy sometimes just trying to survive that we activate that masculine twin flame a lot more than we ever activate the feminine twin flame mm -hmm. and so what happens is the masculine twin flame and the feminine twin flame often get very far apart. And often we wonder, we're missing something. We are, we're missing mm. this consciousness working together. We're missing the whole of our being. But it's not about a soul being cut in half and sent away somewhere. It's mm. actually our own inner consciousness from source that we hold, that beautiful spirit of us that is sitting in separation of itself, in a polarised, magnetised field of energy on Earth that is requiring 
connection and balance. Mm. And that requires mm. us to go within and to do that inner journey, to go within and do that inner journey. Now, the beautiful thing about that is that many people will come to you and reflect that twin flame to you. So it could be your partner, it could be your mother, it could be your children, often it is your children, it could be a good friend. And the universe will bring them to you depending on where their twin flame balance is to either resonate with you or to trigger you in some way to see what's going on with your twin flame energy where it's out of balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is why in a lot of spiritual circles that I know, they will say, well, you know, my twin flame has come. What were they talking about is someone who has come that actually mirrors their own twin flame, where their consciousness is sitting, where their balance is sitting, you know, and they're mirroring that to them. But, of mm -hmm. course, in that mirror, it can be extremely challenging because they're also going to mirror to them what's out of balance what needs to be worked on. Now, if you're in resistance to doing your inner work, then that relationship will become very challenging. Mm -hmm. And so many mm -hmm. people will say, be careful what you wish for when you call for your twin flame to come in, because often that will challenge you. And mm -hmm. it could be, you know, it could be very demanding of you. But mm -hmm. if you're really open to doing that inner journey and growing together, understanding the resonance that each of your twin flames holds to each other, then that can become a beautiful, beautiful relationship when there's acceptance. And that really requires the feminine twin flame in both of you to be quite balanced with the masculine, not to be too far away so that mm. you're working in balance together. You're not both working in the masculine or you're not both working in the feminine because if you're both working in the feminine, you'll be very disconnected. You won't be able to connect with each other because you'll be sitting somewhere else all the time. Um, and if you're both in the masculine, you'll probably be competing with each other. There'll be aggression. There'll be, you know, uh, there could be violence, definitely. Um, but there could be lots of conflict. So you want that, especially if you've got a masculine twin flame that's out of balance, you know. So, um, yes, twin flames can come into your life, but there's not just one. Because what a twin flame is, is in truth, is a reflection of your twin flame, your internal twin flame. And it's going to show you where your internal twin flame is sitting in your consciousness. How balanced is your consciousness? Are you bringing it into balance or not? You know? And it brings to mind when I channeled the master's way, which I didn't realise at the time I was channeling until I completed it and the master's told me, that it was going to become the master's way and it was going to teach people about their twin flame energy, their consciousness, and what needed to be brought into balance. We, I always believed that the path of love would be the first, group, first school yeah, because that was the feminine energy and I thought, well, we all have to come into the feminine energy, you know. But the masters said no, and I must admit I had a bit of a discussion with them about that because they said, no, the path of light is the first one, and I couldn't understand it. And they said, you have to bring the path of light, which is the masculine consciousness, into balance before you can bring the feminine consciousness in. Otherwise there'll be conflict. There'll be, you will not have enough grounding, enough um, light energy within your being to be able to hold the higher frequency of the feminine energy as it comes in mm. so that the two could merge. So you have to do the shadow work first because the light energy with the masculine asks you to do a lot of shadow work. So you've got to work with some of that shadow stuff. And that's another topic of conversation because shadow work has now become a huge trend and people are monetizing that now. And it's interesting what's happening there. So that could be another podcast down the line about shadow work. Mm, yeah, I love the idea. For a long yeah. time. That is so true. That is so true. So, you know, I'm I'm mindful. I am mindful of 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 time that uh, you know we we keep people um, engaged. We will make that another topic. I I feel that what you've shared is such a beautiful explanation um, of the twin flame consciousness 
And if, if anybody is wishing to understand more deeply about their own twin flame consciousness and want to learn how to start to work with that, if you're called to your spiritual path of, of really turning inward mm. on that path, then please either, you know, reach out to myself or to Ishtar. We have a beautiful faculty of teachers from all around the world. Yes. Um, that teach Ishtar's work and you know all you need to do is 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 go to Ishtar's uh, website um, the Ishtar channel.com and from there you'll be able to navigate where it is that you know the information that you're you're seeking so I want to just thank our audience as always to, you know, stay in the course to the end to really uh, embrace all that we have to, to share. I really love this. And I know from the bit of feedback we're getting from students and teachers, that it's really helping our teachers understand more of the work that they're coming to learn from you. And I really feel that we've we've conveyed things today, I hope in a way that the layman's person who isn't so familiar with our language and, and with the concepts we're speaking, that, that it's you know resonated on some level for them to look at more deeply. So Ishtar, again, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom. It's been a, a really, as always, enlightening experience and conversation. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Thank you, everybody for being with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.